Now, in continuation to the lecture 7.1, we will have a detailed analysis of this particular system. I will just uh, explain uh, what is all about this system and how we will coordinate reclosers and fuses to protect this particular system. The data for this 13.8 uh, kV feeder, uh, which is given in figure 5.1, this is figure 5.1. This is given in uh, the table. Uh, here is a table. Um, basically, the description of the system is like this. It has three load taps. You can see loads one, two, and three, um, which are protected by fuses. Uh, the load one is protected by 65T fuse and loads two and three are protected by 100T fuses. We will see the characteristics of 100T fuse and 65T fuse um, in the uh, coming uh, part of the lecture in a plot. Before that, we'll see what is the kind of temporary fault uh, that will occur on this particular system and how the recloser will. Recloser is set to trip and reclose uh, instantaneously or with a uh, time delay to clear this particular fault and restore the service. So uh, other than these uh, fuses, uh, the recloser is uh, shown here, uh, which is ahead of the uh, fuses and it is set to open and reclose for faults up to and beyond the fuses. Right, the, this recloser is uh, set to open and reclose for faults up to and beyond the fuses, but for momentary faults or, or temporary faults. Now, um, if the fault persists, if it is not a uh, temporary fault, uh, if if the fault persists, then the fuses operate for faults to the right side of the uh, fuses or 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 for for downstream uh, permanent faults, the fuses will act. Okay, or the recloser opens after a time delay and locks out completely. In the previous lecture, uh, we discussed about locking out. That that means it will, uh, I mean, permanently this will open and it will uh, isolate the faulty part of the system. But this happens only if the fault is in between the recloser and the fuse, because beyond the fuse, the fuse is there to protect. If, if the fault is before the fuse and after the recloser or in between the fuse and the recloser, then the recloser will lock out if it is a permanent fault. Now, separate time delay overcurrent phase and ground relays uh, are shown here. Um, these relays send trip signal to the substation circuit breaker after multiple reclosures of the recloser. After multiple um, reclosures of the recloser still if the fault persists then if the if the whole uh, i mean the, if the whole section is to be isolated then the circuit breaker will act or the or the substation circuit breaker will act now coordination of fuses and uh, reclosers um, and the time delay overcurrent relays uh, this is shown in figure 5.2 this is figure 5.2, which gives the characteristics of um, fuses, then reclosers and the relays. OK, so the horizontal axis of this figure, this plot gives you the primary current in amperes and the vertical axis represents the time in seconds. Now we'll note something here. Um, the type T fuses, type T in the sense here, uh, you can see 65 T fuse and 100 T fuse. In the system also, you have seen that for load 3, it is 65 T fuse, and for loads 2 and 3, it is 100 T fuse. Uh, so uh, the characteristics of these fuses are shown in this particular figure. Uh, so these fuses are selected. Um, uh, 
as slow fuses because their time current characteristics coordinate well with the reclosures because after the reclo after the sequence of reclosures by the recloser only the fuse should come into picture so fuse uh, should be slow with respect to time the fuses are selected on the basis of maximum loads served from the taps that means at each bus 1 2 and 3 what is the maximum load that is served based on that only the fuses are selected now a 65t fuse is selected for the bus 1 tap which has a 60 amps maximum load current and 100t uh, fuses are selected for buses 2 and 3 taps which have 95 amps maximum load currents the fuses should also have a rated voltage larger than the maximum bus voltage and an interrupting current rating uh, larger than the maximum um, asymmetric fault current at the fuse location these are the fuse locations okay so basically the fault beyond this fuse uh, decides the fault current the maximum fault current now uh, type t fuses with uh, voltage ratings of 15 kV Uh, because this system is of 13.8 uh, kV so 15 kV is of obviously uh, larger than 13.8 kV uh, so type t fuses with vol voltage ratings of 15 kV and uh, interrupting uh, current ratings of 10 kilo amps and higher are used as, i mean as per standards in this particular system now standard reclosers have this is a standard recloser standard reclosers have minimum uh, trip ratings of um, 50 70 50 amps 70 amps 100 amps 140 amps uh, 200 amps etc with voltage ratings of 38 kV and maximum interrupting currents up to 16 kV uh, a minimum trip rating of 200 to 250% of maximum load current is typically selected for the um phases uh, in order to override the cold load uh, pickup with a uh, safety factor what is cold load pickup cold load pickup in the sense uh, if this load is uh, we are connecting this load for the first time then there is an inrush of current that should not be uh, mistakenly uh, uh, i mean identified as or or misidentified as a fault by the protection protective device right so uh, the minimum trip rating of the recloser should be 200 to 250% of the maximum load current so this safety uh, margin is already kept okay the, uh, i mean the cold load pickup is not identified as a it should not be identified as a fault okay um then the minimum trip rating of the ground unit ground unit in the sense the, is this ground relay okay ground unit is typically set at maximum load and should be higher than the maximum allowable load unbalance because whenever there is an unbalance then only the ground relay comes into picture so the maximum load unbalance in steady state uh, that we should know and beyond that only the ground relay should uh, send a trip signal to the uh, circuit breaker okay now we will see the popular operation sequence of the recloser the recloser basically has two fast operations uh, without any time delay followed by two delayed operations uh, fast operations allow temporary faults to self clear uh, like uh, what is mentioned what was mentioned before um, whereas delayed uh, operations allow downstream fuses to clear the permanent faults that means um, during the fast reclosures it waits and uh, waits until the fault is self cleared the fault um, uh, the fault is self cleared then if it is not self cleared then it has a it has two delayed reclosures so during this uh, these delayed reclosures this fuse this fuse will come into picture and it will isolate the this section the downstream section is isolated by this particular fuse okay so the first thing to act is the recloser 
and the fuse will come into picture uh, at a later stage only. OK, now. Uh, as a result, what should be the characteristic of uh, fuses and reclosers in the in this plot? The fuse curves. Th this is the time current Kara, right? Where is it? Yes, this is the time current curves of uh, uh, fast recloser. Fast recloser is shown. This is this is for delayed recloser, right? This is for delayed recloser. Then this is for fast recloser. Okay. Now you can see that the the time current curves of fast reclosers lie below the fuse curves because this should act before the fuses, right? So at a particular current, the lowest time is for, at the, at the lowest time, this will be active. The fast recloser is active. So in the sequence of reclosures, the fast reclosing events will happen at first. Right, it will it will happen at first. Then, so that is why it is uh, below all the uh, curves. Okay, now um, that is why the recloser opens before the fuses melt. Then the fuse curves. Where are the fuse curves? Here you can see 65 T fuse and 100 T fuse. The fuse curves lie below the delayed recloser curves. Delayed recloser curves are to the right side of the fuses. So um, after the, so what happens here? Uh, which should act first, whether the fuse or the delayed recloser? Because during the de delayed reclose, uh, delayed reclosures itself, the fuse should act, right? And once the fuse acts, what happens is for this system, suppose for this system, the system which is shown here, Suppose this fuse acts, the 100 T fuse acts, and this load 2 is already isolated. Loads 1 and 3 should still be fed or, or, or they should come back to service. So after the, after the delayed uh, reclosers, the recloser should uh, restore the system to feed loads 1 and 3. That means fuse, this fuse, load 2 fuse is acting before the delayed reclosure. That is why the fuse characteristics are to the are on the left side of the uh, delayed reclosure curves. OK, the fuse curves lie uh, below the delayed reclosure curves. From here, if we take a current corresponding to this particular current, the first time, I mean, uh, the first one to act would be the fuse before the uh, delayed reclosure delayed uh, recloser OK. Now. The recloser is typically programmed to reclose. Half seconds, half second after the first fast trip, two seconds after the second fast trip and five to ten seconds after a delayed trip. This is what I was mentioning about this five to ten seconds after a delayed trip. That means the, during this delayed trip, the fuse will come into picture. So, so basically the fuse should act before the delayed trips. The, the, the final reclose, uh, reclosure after the delayed trip. Okay. Now, uh, the time delay overcurrent relays with an extremely inverse uh, characteristic. Uh, here uh, you can see that the phase overcurrent relay and the ground overcurrent relay uh, characteristics um, for that particular, uh, uh, this one. Uh, just shown in the figure uh, 5.1, the phase release and the ground release. These characteristics are shown in this particular figure. So these are extremely inverse characteristics and they coordinate with both reclosers and type T fuses. And you can see here that the phase and ground overcurrent release are the rightmost curves because if still the fault is fault happens to be permanent and if it is in between the uh, fuse and the uh, recloser or sometimes if, if it is before the recloser itself at bus 4 and if it still remains then the complete section has to be isolated. If the complete section has to be isolated this relay should send a trip signal to, to the substation uh, circuit breaker. So this happens at last only that is why this is on the 
rightmost side of the plot okay rightmost side uh, the, the rightmost curves are uh, curves correspond to phase over current relay and ground over current relay okay now uh, let's see an example uh, to um, see the operation of recloser and fuse for permanent and temporary faults okay so a current tap setting the current tap setting of 9 amps is selected for co2 phase relay the phase relay used in the system um, has a current tap setting of 9 amps these are given data okay uh, so that the minimum pickup exceeds twice the maximum load then a time dial setting of 2 is selected so that the delayed recloser trips at least 0.2 seconds before the relay these are that uh, i mean given data okay uh, we'll come to it when we um, do this particular uh, problem or or when we go through this particular case study so the for this for the system in figure 5.1 describe the operating sequence of the protective devices for the following faults that is a question mm -hmm. um for this particular system suppose if we have two if we have two different faults the first one is a self clearing temporary three phase fault on the load side of tap 2 this is tap 2 okay on the load side of tap 2 we have a self clearing temporary three phase fault so now we'll see how these protective devices respond to this particular fault 